Wall Street Wrap Up is supported by Bambulas, featuring live music and coming soon, tapas and wine upstairs. Bambulas, the heartbeat of Frenchman Street. This week on Wall Street Wrap Up, the saga continues. Disney is now suing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis this week. Do you have good credit, always paying your bills on time? Well, a new housing regulation going into effect will penalize you if you have good credit and reward you if you have bad credit. What? We'll tell you more. Are we heading into a recession? We'll be talking to the co-chief investment strategist at John Hancock with over $226 billion of assets under management. We're going to find out where he's investing this year so we can do it too. Do you have a son or daughter, or would you like to have an intern position this summer that pays $9,000 a month? Well, that company is, you know what? I'll tell you later. Stick around. I'm Andre Laborde. We've got these stories and more. It's the last trading day of April. It's Friday, and it's time for Wall Street Wrap-Up. Hi, welcome to Wall Street Wrap-Up. I'm Andre Laborde. It's Friday, April the 28th. Well, this week, the Commerce Department released how the economy grew in the first quarter of the year. The GDP for the country grew by 1.1 percent for the last three months. Now, that wasn't good because it was expected to be growing by 2 percent. One reason for the need to have a higher GDP is to be paying the higher interest cost on the national debt. Well, stocks ended the day at session highs. The monthly sector winners were communication services, energy, and staples. And the sector laggards this month were industrials and discretionary. The top stocks of today and this week were Intel and Airbnb. And this week, the Dow Jones closed today up eight-tenths of a point for the week. The S&P 500, they closed today up nine-tenths of a point for the week. And the NASDAQ, they closed up just under 1.3 percent for the week. Well, a good credit score can usually guarantee a lot of things, say lower rates on mortgages, and a bad credit score means you'll be paying more for, say, a mortgage. But there are some changes coming on May the 1st, this Monday, that those who do not have good credit, well, they'll be paying less at the expense of those who have good credit. What? Starting on May the 1st, Monday, those loans backed by Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae for people with poor credit will be significantly lowered, while fees with good credit will be, be paying more. Now, this essentially subsidizes those that have risky credit. A person with a lower credit score of 620 or below and a down payment of just 5% on a house gets a one and three quarter percent fee discount on a 30 year mortgage, where a person with good credit score of 740 or higher and paying 15 to 20% down, they're now going to be paying an increase of a 1% fee. This applies to people of all income levels. A Biden administration spokesman said that this is going to promote first-time home ownership, adding that people that were locked out of buying a home because of poor credit to achieve their dream. Does anybody out there remember 2008? Let's hope so. Well, let's get to our guest tonight. Matt Miskin is the co-chief investment strategist at John Hancock Investment Management with over $226 billion of assets under management. Hi, Matt. Welcome to Wall Street Wrap-Up. Thanks for having me, Andre. Matt, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of scenarios that are looming right now, and I'm wondering if you see a problem of one more than the other. And here's what I'm thinking of. Next week, we have the, the Federal Reserve that it possibly will be raising interest rates again. Uh, we have uh, earnings season right now that are being reported. Uh, we have a debt ceiling that may be coming up in June that might be raised or may be delayed in raising. Do you see one of a problem that coming up that may be more one than the other? And right now, what's going on is there's a tug of war between inflation risk, which is still persistently around, the housing market still showing some inflation, that's still there, and recession risk. So the Federal Reserve's raising rates to take down inflation, but unfortunately, it has side effects. Higher interest rates mean higher borrowing costs to consumers, whether it's auto loans, credit card loans, mortgages, and that's weighing on the economy. And right now we're in this teeter-totter. Right now inflation's the, the thing that's causing more uh, risk in terms of the market. We think that's going to move over 
to uh, the economy and the employment picture by the end of the year. So we actually see the economy as the biggest risk as the year goes on, leading economic indicators, which we, we focus on where the economy is going versus where it's been. That shows a slowdown in the pipeline. Well, right now, inflation is, a, is about six and a half percent or so. Do you see inflation continuously now going down to the two percent level or do you see inflation going back up to where we had before? So inflation, when it's measured, typically it's on a year over year basis. And what we were going through this time last year was the imperfect storm for inflation. You had supply chain disruptions. You had the Russia Ukraine war breaking out. So that made commodity prices, oil prices jump, gas prices go up. Uh, you still had stimulus uh, from COVID that was the PPP loans. You had all this excess savings in the pipeline and that caused this high inflation. And we do see inflation coming down over the course of the year, but it's probably not going to hit that 2% target. The Federal Reserve has this target, right? They want to hit 2%. Well, it's not like Amazon where you can click a button and the next day it, it's at your doorstep. To get inflation down, it's hard. And what they likely have to do is put the brakes on the economy to get that inflation down. And that's another reason why we think recession risk could be unfortunately coming as the year goes on because the Federal Reserve is going to have to stay tight and stay um, you know, with higher interest rates until that inflation comes down. Um, so we do think it comes down over the course of the year, but unfortunately, the side effects will be a likely recession with it. Hmm. Well, next week, we're going to be having a, a Federal Reserve meeting. In fact, right now, they're in their quiet period. What are your thoughts for, the, for May when they're going to be meeting? Do you think they're do you think they're going to raise? Raise? Do you think they're going to do 25? Or do you think they're going to be a one and done? Right now, the bond market is pricing in a high probability that they're going to raise rates 25 basis points in May. That'll bring the Fed funds rate to 5.25%. Um, and we do believe after that, they're going to pause. There's a lot of data right now that is very mixed. Like I said, the leading economic indicators are, are declining. You're starting to see unemployment. Um, well, at least the initial jobless claims are starting to tick up to about 245,000. And we think that they'll be able to pause after that. The bond market is then saying that they are going to pause until November, and then they're going to start cutting uh, 25 basis points in November, and then another 25 basis points in December. If the economy stays out of a recession, then they're going to be able to pause and they're going to be able to hold. If they start cutting, though, or sorry, if we go in a recession, though, then they're going to likely start cutting. In an average recession over the last three of them, dating back 30 years, uh, on average, they've dropped interest rates about 4%. So that's a lot of cuts. Uh, so that's not priced in the bond market right now. If we do see a recession, we think treasury markets, treasury bonds are going to rally uh, and high quality bonds are going to rally, meaning price return as well as a really nice income stream. Um, so that's something that could actually come about here. But it's really this, this tough decision for the Fed. Again, if they don't go in a recession, likely hold. They do. They're probably cutting more than the market expects. When it comes to recession, Matt, I mean, sometimes we'll we'll find it, find out about it when it's in our rearview mirror. Um, what are some of the telltale signs that you think that uh, the consumer, the investor, will know? They go, we're in a recession right now. Yeah, Andre, and, and we can't even come up with a definition anymore with this, right? So it used to be <laughs> it the used common to be, right. definition. <laughs> the two consecutive. Yeah, quarters, right? yeah, that's out the window, right? <laughs> two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, and that's that's what it was. And then because of the COVID recession in 2020, it only lasted two months. Mm -hmm. So they had to change the definition because it was too short of a, a recession to even call it that. Um, but when you go to the uh, National Bureau of Economic Research and you see that's who actually gets to call these things. They're a business think tank out of Cambridge, Mass., and they get to make the calls of when does the recession start, when it doesn't. You can go to their website and find out what they're looking at. It's not, I'll, I'll, I'll save you the suspense. It's not very clear. It's very subjective. There's a broad range of things, but they come up with one chart. Uh, that we think is actually really informative of what's going to make that call. And that's the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate going up and the jobs market weakening. Uh, so initial jobless claims going up. That will be your telltale sign of a recession. If people have a job, they can get through the economy, whether it's you know a little bit higher inflation, so on and so forth. If they don't have a job, 
it's really tough for the consumer. Right now, we're at about three and a half percent unemployment for March. And uh, there's, especially in the tech sector, uh, there's, there's having massive layoffs. I mean, Meta is having layoffs. Bed Bath & Beyond this week has uh, filing for bankruptcy. So with the unemployment rate heading higher, will be that telltale sign that we are now in that recession? That's right. And, you know, it's one of these things where we've waited and waited in the employment picture. The jobs market has been on fire in the United States. I mean, we have made back all the jobs we lost during COVID. We've gone 12 consecutive months of beat, which means that the, the data is coming better than expectations on the non-farm payroll jobs report. So there's these monthly jobs report. The market is just fascinated. You know, it's, it's from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They come out, they tell you how many jobs are created. That's come out and beat estimates 12 months in a row. Eventually, though, that's probably going to show some cracks. Um, and it's going to be harder to find a job. And that unemployment rate, while it is low, it's of the lowest in history. So what that means is it's hard to be the lowest in history of the lowest in history forever. Um, and so if the Fed, again, it goes back to the Fed, because they're raising rates so much, that's causing the cost of capital to go up for companies. That's making companies that are zombie companies that weren't doing as well. All of a sudden, they've got to pay higher for, for money, uh, and that makes it harder for them to keep their businesses running. And then that shows up in the employment picture, too. Now, we have a lot of banks that are being reported, and with the regional banks right now, and I'm thinking specifically, Matt, I'm thinking of SVB, Silicon Valley, uh, I'm thinking of uh, Symphony, uh, I'm thinking of things like that. It's going to be much harder now for, for, for the, the small business owner to maybe secure loans or lines of credit like they may had at one time prior to all these problems. At, at John Hancock, um, are you, is a maybe in the credit markets, maybe something that you're either in or you're thinking about being involved with to maybe fill that void? You know, I think these regional banks are going to be in a tougher position. I think the regulation is going to have to be increased post this. You know, it's funny with, with some of these, they actually were following the books. It's just actually the regulators didn't uh, incorporate changes in interest rates into their regulations which seems odd, like you would you would think, I mean, interest rates were low for a long time, so maybe that was it. But that's what triggered some of this is that they were taking interest rate calls into their, you know, kind of capital management, which were, and then some of them backfired. Um, but overall, what we're seeing in terms of the banking system more broadly is these larger banks seem fine. Um, you know, the deposits seem okay. You know, what we're seeing more in the banks, instead of the lending, you know, there's still some lending, but lending is, it's more challenged. But to us, it's an earnings issue. We think this is a broader thing, not just the, you know, you talked about some bankruptcies that are going on with poorly run companies. Frankly, we think there's poorly run companies in every industry right now that, because they all of a sudden have a higher cost of capital, if they're poorly run, they're probably going to hit bankruptcy. And so we think that's part of the banking system, but it's also more broad. You know, for us, this is not you know, stepping in there in terms of this. You, you need to have the regula regulation in place, the FDIC insurance, the backing of the FDIC to really do this business justice that you know, the banks have been doing. But the way that it's been written it almost disadvantages some of these regional banks versus the larger ones. The larger ones are too big to fail. So they're, you know, kind of blanketed by this uh, FDIC insurance. I think there's going to be some pretty big regulation overhauls that come about to this longer term. That structure will actually help the industry. It might cost a little bit more. Um, but for now, we've kind of get through this tricky environment, given the macro pictures deteriorating, and we had some kind of poor regulations and poor decision-making in some of the banks. Especially, as you were saying, how they would take these deposits and they would, thinking that they were doing it in a, in a conservative manner, investing them in treasuries, do you think that now, right now, we know of a couple of banks, you know, and as I mentioned, we Signature or, or SVB and, and a couple of others, but do you think that there are more maybe shoes to fall that others had doing this well? Because just as also with the way you mentioned, it was like on a Thursday, they had at one time through social media, $40 billion that at one time had gone through, had been taking their, a bank run out of there. And then they knew on Friday, they were going to have like another hundred billion. And they just, they didn't have the, the liquidity. 
Yeah, and in the banking industry, the technology advancements also have an impact on this. If you can go online and transfer your money in seconds, mm -hmm. then the typical bank that you know thought that money was sticky is is in a tough position really quick because they're not you know people aren't running to the tellers like the old days. They're just going online, and and so that's causing a movement of money to be faster. Um, you know, I think for us again, you know, we look at there are probably. <laughs> Warren Buffett said this line once that when the tide goes out, you can see who's kind of swimming without their uh, bathing suit on. And right now the tide's going out more broadly because, again, the economy is slowing, interest rates are higher, and we think it's going to show, again, poorly run businesses. Yes, there's probably other poorly run business in the banking system that probably are going to face challenges, but I wouldn't just isolate them. I think you know when we look across industries, there's zombie companies and technology that were living on low cost of capital. There's healthcare, biotech. There's you can name a, a bunch of different industries. Uh, we're we're trying to manage risk by looking for well-established businesses with good balance sheets, good return on equity, good cash flow, and we're really trying to navigate this environment by finding the highest quality companies. But I think it is going to be a challenge still for those businesses that weren't well run as the tide comes out. If we're looking at a recession, probably later, later on as the months go into 2023, what type of companies would you say, like a John Hancock, that would weather a recession that it, it wouldn't be the, the volatility of maybe as if it would be a recession? Yeah, so defensive companies, so non-cyclical businesses, you know, think of consumer staples or a utility type business. Um, typically hold up better than more cyclical businesses like financials or materials or something like that. Uh, and then within companies, you want to find companies that have strong enough balance sheets. So if you need money right now, they have this, you know, if you study finance, it's called the weighted average cost of capital, uh, whack, and it is going up. So the cost of money is, is being prohibitive and you have to make more on your money than the cost of money. And that's one of the another basic principles of finance. Your return on capital has to be higher than your cost of capital. Well, right now, the cost of capital bar is high. And so if you have a balance sheet where you don't need money, like some of these large technology companies in the industry right now, they have hundreds of billions of dollars on ca uh, cash on their balance sheet. Um, they're not going to need to go out and issue more equity or debt. Um, those are the kind of companies we like. In terms of more defensive companies, think about like healthcare, utilities, consumer staples. And then within other sectors, we would use a quality screen looking for those with better balance sheets, higher return on equity, better profits. And then there's also the bond market, right? So like I was talking about before, so within stocks, you can play some defense, but bonds wise, that's another place that actually could rally and diversify portfolios in the event of a recession. Do you like to have, uh, Matt, a certain percentage of X amount percentage of equities to X amount percentage of bonds? Yeah. So, I mean, some have said that the old 60-40 portfolio is dead and, you know, it did have a bad year last year, but historically over the last hundred years, bad years are, so, are followed by subsequently good years. Sure. Um, and what we look at though right now is when we value the equity market and the bond market, the bond market is looking very competitive versus other options. So we do have a modest overweight, couple percent overweight bonds versus stocks. And then with each in each of those buckets, the equity bucket and the fixed income bucket, we're more defensive. Uh, we're a bit underweight, small cap, overweight, mid and large cap, uh, overweight sectors that have higher quality and are more defensive. And then in the bond side, we're underweight things like high yield or more credit oriented mar uh, parts of the bond market. And we're more intermediate duration um, because if interest rates fall, prices rise for bonds. And even though prices struggled last year for the bond market, we actually think that could come back into 2023. Um, as again, if we get a recession, the Fed turns and actually cuts as the year goes on, bonds could actually rally. Did, did you say that you were underweight for uh, interest, or rather um, high yield? You know, the lowest credit quality businesses are in the high yield market. So we're underweight that. We're if you know equity that trades like equities often, mm -hmm. um, and if you get that volatility, and right now it's not valued that attractively. The spreads, the difference between treasury yields and high yield, is only about four percent. Historically speaking, that is about five percent, and then in recessions that goes up 
uh, to more like, I mean, it could be as much as 8%. Uh, what do you use as a criteria to how long you can't, you were talking about Warren Buffett. Well, Warren Buffett had a, has a common thought of, uh, you know, short term for him is 20 years. You know, I'm thinking of, you know, Coca-Cola, American Express and such. There's one thing of getting in. What do you look at when it's time for you want to pull chocks and get out? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, long-term investors, what we've seen have, have typically done the best. And, and that's why another thing, when we think about portfolio management, risk management, we're not trying to make massive shifts in and out of stocks or bonds and asset allocation, because at the end of the day, you know, a market turn can leave you in the dust. Um, what we're trying to do is make tweaks and, and try to position portfolios and lean into part, certain parts. In terms of when you want to manage risk the most, Frankly, it's it's coming up um, in a late cycle environment. Again, it's it's usually the time where you want to take some risk off. Think about defensive portfolio positioning, and then in an early cycle. So usually the the way it works is the Fed raises rates, raises rates, and then they pause, and then they a recession starts, and they cut aggressively. And then they start the cycle all over again. Uh, they go back into raising rates again, and, and that goes on and on. And so, you know, when they cut and, and that goes down to low interest rates, that's usually the bottom of the, the market cycle. And that's usually when you actually want to add risk. And, and so for us, it's, it's about this just managing risk, tilting a bit more conservatively for now, not getting out. Because another thing is, you know, when these things turn, and the market turns before the, someone tells you there's a recession. So a lot of, you know, like the, the, when you hear there's a recession, it's usually six quarters after the recession actually happened. So no one's going to tell you, hey, you should have gotten back in at, you know, so-and-so point. Um, but, you know, we look at leading economic indicators as kind of how we think about the market cycle. Right now, they're, they're actually a negative 8% on a year-over-year -year basis. They're near recessionary readings, yet it hasn't really repriced the markets. Again, that's why we're more conservative. But when those bottom and start to reaccelerate, which we think it could be later this year, that's a different playbook. And that's one that we think is going to be a, a nice opportunity uh, for stocks and, and certain parts of the credit markets. Uh, do you think, like what you're talking about toward the end of the year, do you think the S&P is going to be dropping before it starts going to be picking up again? So this is always one of the, the challenging ones. And, you know, for us, again, you know, price levels are, are trying to kind of time this perfectly. We've we've found this to be a, a sometimes a losing effort in terms of timing that. But what we're just trying to do is, is look at the cycle. This would be the first time in history uh, that the market bottomed before the recession even started. And so as history is a guide, that would suggest there is likely more volatility at a minimum uh, we've been trading in a range for a long time, it feels like now. Um, but at a, at a, you know, kind of a base case, yeah, we revisit, uh, those, those prior lows. That's not, again, I mean, we've got a little bit of underweight stocks. We're more conservatively positioned within equities, but it's not like we're out. So if, if the market does, if this is, this time is different and, and that was it, um, you know, we're not going to catch all the upside. We'll catch most of it. Um, and, you know, for us, again, though, we do use history, we use the cycle as a guide. And so that to us is signaling, yeah, there's probably still more we've got to get through here as it relates to the economy. That would be the really the signal for us that um, the bottom is in and we're starting a new cycle. Matt, I had a great time. I, I hope you come back. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Hey, Matt, thanks so much. Well, hey, if you've got a question or a comment about the show, we'd love to hear from you. Make it concise. Make it pithy. Write us and notice the new email address at Andre at Benacapital.com. So let's take a look at the markets heading into next week. But first, prior to being called Facebook, what did Mark Zuckerberg originally call his social network? We'll have the answer in a moment. Well, prior to being called Facebook, what did Mark Zuckerberg originally call his social network? Face Mash. It was on October 28th, 2003. Well, let's have a wrap up on Wall Street, shall we? The weight loss company Jenny Craig is telling staffers it's winding down its centers and warns of mass layoffs. They're currently looking for a buyer of the company and possibly exploring online sales only. 
The CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, this week suing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, alleging that the Florida governor and, quote, waging a, a relentless campaign to weaponize government. This state started from Disney's expressing its opposition to the Florida law of not teaching sex orientation and transgenderism in schools of K, kindergarten through third grade. In response to Disney's lawsuit, Governor DeSantis said, we're unaware of any legal right that a company has to operate its own government or maintain special privileges not held by any other businesses in the state. He goes on to say, this lawsuit is yet another unfortunate example of their hope to undermine the will of the Florida voters and operate outside the bounds of the law. Both sides are digging in. Internship. Well, that used to be a free labor for the employer and work experience for the employee with the hope of getting a position. Some internships are paying big money, though. Meta, Facebook, is paying just over $8,100 per month, as well as Coinbase, NVIDIA, and breaking into over $9,000 a month for interns is Roblox and number one intern, Stripe. Now, this is for a summer job. Kids learn to code. It sure beats asking customers, would you like fries with that? Cigarette smoking dropped to an all-time low last year, this according to the CDC. Today, they show only 11% of adults are cigarette smokers. That's down from 12.5% from a year prior. Although e-cigarettes rose to 6% from about 4.5% from that year prior. Well, the American Heart Association has weighed in on best and worst diets for your heart. The worst is the ketogenic or keto and paleo diets for their reliance on fats from animal sources. And the best, the Mediterranean diet, which focuses on whole grains, vegetables and low fat dairy. Well, that's a wrap up on Wall Street wrap up. Finally, is crypto as Bitcoin and other digital currencies? Is it dead? This week, Bitcoin investor and CEO, Social Capital CEO, Chamath Palapithia, this week on CNBC said crypto is dead in America. Well, is he right? Next week, we're going to be talking about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and the future of this investment with Axios reporter Brady Dale. He not only writes a crypto newsletter, but he's the author of the new book on a scandal that theft Oh, well, alleged theft by Sam Bankman-Fried and the FTX. How could someone as Sam Bankman-Fried accumulate billions be put on the cover of Forbes as the next J.P. Morgan and such a scam? That's next week, author and reporter for Axios, Brady Dale. Well, that's our show for this Friday, April 28th. My thanks to Matt Miskin for joining us tonight, but we especially we appreciate you for allowing us into your homes this evening. Have a fun weekend ahead with the ones you love and a productive week ahead. I'll see you next week. And remember, if it's Friday, it's Wall Street Wrap-Up. I'm Andre Laborde, and remember, money never sleeps. Good night. Wall Street Wrap is supported by Bamboulas, featuring live music and coming soon, tapas and wine upstairs. Bamboulas, the heartbeat of Frenchman Street.